Okay, so welcome to this final video on the Poisson distribution, and in this video we're just going to uh, outline the Poisson paradigm. And I'm certainly not going to include a proof of this. The Poisson paradigm. Paradigm. Okay, so this is a statement of the Poisson paradigm, and this is really to show how useful and how powerful the Poisson distribution is. And it is fair to say that it is probably the most important distribution in all of statistics. Uh, so, for instance, things like um, Maxwell-Boltzmann uh, statistics in um, statistical thermodynamics, uh, all of that comes from this distribution. The Boltzmann distribution comes from the Poisson distribution. It's asking, what is the probability of of uh, a certain molecule having a certain amount of energy, basically, and it's uh, it, it's a good approximation to use the Poisson distribution. Okay, uh, so the Poisson paradigm is this. Uh, so uh, let's have uh, let's have a probability space. So some abstract probability space here. Uh, lambda, uh, sorry, omega uh, curly f, the set of events, and a probability measure. And let's have a set of events. So uh, let's have some events a one, a two, all the way up to uh, a big N. So this is a set of events and uh, we're going to say that uh, the number of these events is quite large. N is quite large. Large. So we've got quite a few events here and each of these has a probability associated to it. P1, uh, P2, all the way up to uh, P uh, big N. And we're going to say that the probabilities, uh, P probabilities, are quite small are quite small. Uh, so what we could do is we could set up indicator random variables for each of these events. So we could set up uh, the indicator random variable for A1, uh, which is going to map, um, which is going to map uh, any outcome onto either 0 or 1. It's going to map it onto 0 if S is an element of A1. And it's going to map, uh, sorry, if S is not an element of A1, and it's going to map it onto 1 if S is an element of A1. And obviously the probability that X, uh, probability that this indicator random variable uh, A1 uh, is equal to, oh sorry, is equal to 1, is going to be equal to uh, P1. So we can set up indicator random variables for each of these. And basically what we can say, what we can ask is, let's make a new random variable, which is X, uh, which is going to map... Um, which is going to map um, uh, any S onto uh, the number of events that it's in. It's going to map S onto number of, uh, let's say, the AIs, which it is an element of, which it is an element of. So that's uh, so uh, we want to know what is the probability that x is equal to I, which is the what it, what, what we're basically asking there is. Uh, how, what's the probability that I of these events happen, basically? What's the probability that I of them actually come true? So, what is the probability that I events happen? What is the probability that I events happen? Now, if we want to calculate the expected value of x, we know that that is very easy because x is equal uh, to the sum of all of these indicator random variables, uh, indicator a1 plus the indicator a2 plus all the way along to the indicator an. Uh, and by linearity, we can split this up into uh, the expectation value of each of these indicator and, the, and each of these is just distributed by a, in a Bernoulli distribution of um, indicator A2 plus uh, the uh, expectation value, or plus all the way along to the expectation value of the indicator, uh, indicator random variable for A big N. So I need some more paper. Um, use that. Okay, uh, so we could uh, say that um, because these are Bernoulli distributed, uh, the expectation value is just the probability that uh, the indicator random variable is equal to 1. So this becomes P1 plus P2 uh, plus all the way up to uh, P big N. Uh, so the Poisson paradigm is then that uh, the probability that X is equal to I is approximately equal to E 
uh, to the negative lambda, where I define this expectation value to be lambda, uh, this expectation value of the random variable x to be equal to lambda. So remember, the expectation value of a Poisson distribution we found is going to be equal to lambda. So if we want, so it makes sense that we want uh, to approximate it by a Poisson distribution which has the same expected value as it in effect. So this is the random variable that we actually want to know, and we're going to approximate it with a Poisson distribution. Uh, and uh, so what we're saying is we're going to approximate it with a Poisson distribution with the same expected value as it actually has. So we've worked out its expected value, so we're going to set the expected value of our Poisson distribution, which is going to approximate it to equal to that. Okay, and then we'll get lambda to the i over i factorial, and that is the Poisson paradigm.